In the previous video, video I pointed out that the problem of uh, stratification is that you can't stratify by too many factors. A different form of randomization is called minimization. And this is fairly controversial because it's not really randomized at all, but it's based on the state of the trial at any particular point in time. So let's suppose that we'd done a trial with simple, random, simple randomization and we'd ended up <coughs> with four stones in the treated group and one bead and two stones in the control group and two beads. Now we're trying to decide which treatment the next patient is going to do. So again, we need to order all the patients, the beads and the stones, so that the next patient is going to be a stone. So the question is, where are we going to allocate this stone? Well, if we look at the uh, balance, we've got two in the control group, two stones, and four in the treated group. So in fact, we're going to balance this stone by moving it to the control group to give us more balance between that and the treated group. So the next patient we see is a bead. So where are we going to put the bead? We notice that there are two beads in the control group and only one bead in the treated group. So the bead will go over to the treated group. So now we've got to decide which one to go. The next person is a stone, and you can see there are four stones in the treated group, three stones in the control group. So we allocate the stone to the control group. Now we've got perfect balance, so we can actually use randomization to decide who the next person is going to go to. So you can see the card is red, so the next patient is going to go to the treated group. Now the next patient here is a bead, and again we can see that we've got perfect balance in beads, so we can do the randomization again and then put the bead in that group. So now we've got uh, imbalance again, and so we can decide the next patient is a bead, and you can see that to balance the two groups, we'd want to put the bead in the treated group, so that's the way it goes. And so then <coughs> we've got three beads and uh, five stones. The next patient is a bead, so we'll do some randomization again. And again, the bead goes to the red group. And so the next patient is a stone. And in fact, we've got four stones and five stones, so the stone is going to go to the control group. And then finally, we decide to allocate where the bead should go to. You can see there are three beads in the control and four beads in the treated, so the bead goes to the control group. So you can see now we've got some good balance, and people argue that this is not proper randomization because it depends on data which could be determined. So if somebody had perfect knowledge of the entire trial and their characteristics in terms of beads and stones, then in fact they could predict what the next patient is going to be. But generally trials are multi-center, patients in one, or doctors in one center, don't know what happens in the other centers, only the coordinating trial manager will know all the status of the different things, and in fact it's usually done by a computer anyway. So, and one could argue that the state of the trial up to a particular point is random anyway. So it's a, it's a controversial area, but it's one which can be very useful in trying to minimize more than uh, one particular factor in a particular trial, which is one of the limitations you have with stratified randomization.